there are many broken relationships in this world that we live in. Whether it's marriages and people being abused, people being unfaithful, a lot of relationships ending because of lack of love, ultimately. And we see in the Bible the standards that are set by God, especially with the characters that are presented to us in the scriptures, about how to have good and solid relationships that are built on the foundation that the Lord wants our relationships to be built on, which is ultimately true faith and trust in Him. And it's not only marriages, it's friendships, family relationships. If we want good and pure and holy relationships, we should follow the examples that our Lord gives us in the Bible. And specifically in this gospel that we read today, which is the second week of Advent, we are presented with the story of Mary and the angel Gabriel. And specifically, I want to offer a practical example of a relationship in the gospel, which can be an example for the whole world. No matter what kind of relationship we have in our lives, and we all are in relationships because we are social beings. So whether it's marriage, whether it's relationships that are ordered toward marriage, whether it's just simple friendships or family relationships, we could all learn from the example of the most pure and holy relationship that has ever been on this earth, and it's the relationship of Mary and Joseph. We see in this story, the first thing, one of the first things that Luke tells us in the Gospel is that Mary was betrothed to Joseph. She was engaged to him. And so from that, we could tell that they had a life planned out together probably a normal life, like any Jewish relationship would have been. But then we see that Mary has a visitor. An angel comes to her, and he shocks her world completely. And he tells her that she is going to take part in something so great, in the greatest thing, actually, that could ever happen to humanity. And God wanted to accomplish it through her. And so what did that mean for Mary and her relationship with Joseph? It meant that their relationship was going to change drastically. That it wasn't going to be the same. It wasn't going to just be any normal, typical relationship. And so Mary heard from the angel about what her new life would consist of if she accepted. She asked a question when she didn't understand. The angel explained to her. And then once she got all the details and the only detail that she needed to accept was that it would be done through the power of the Holy Spirit, was that God would be involved. Once she heard that God would be involved, she immediately accepted. And so Mary shows us something very practical about the relationships that we have in our lives and something that should be a foundation for any relationship, and it is that God has to come first. Be it done to me according to your word. So many times in our lives, we want God to do it according to our way. We say, God, I know you may want something from me, but I want this, and so I'm going to choose this. And that is one of the main problems in this world and in the relationships that we have. When we choose to do it our way. What is our way? Our way is the sinful way. Our way is the way of Adam and Eve when they chose to go against God. And specifically because we're talking about the greatest woman to ever exist, Mother Mary, specifically Eve is the one who broke off from unity with God through her sin. And she chose, and also Adam was there with her, and they're both to blame, but Eve chose to fall into that sin, to give into her desires. The first thing on her mind was her desires was not the will of God, even though she knew what God wanted. That's how the story of humanity started, with a sin. And that's why humanity fell into the state of separation from God, because of the sin of Adam and Eve. And then the story of the renewed humanity, the renewed human race, the new creation that God wants to establish with us, also starts with a woman who had the opportunity to give in to her way, to her desires. But she said, Behold, let it be done to me according to your word, not to my word. And so Mary chooses God's way. 
And if we all choose God's way over our way, we will have good and holy relationships. So they put God in the middle. And Mary, although she loved Joseph, she loved God more. And that's how it has to be in our lives. We have to prioritize. I'm not saying that we should not love each other with a tremendous love, but the first love needs to be a love for God and to love according to His way and to His standards. That's why the story starts by talking about the normal relationship between Mary and Joseph, but then it shows us how her relationship transcends all relationships in this world because ultimately she wants to be faithful to God first. And if we are faithful to God first, then we'll be faithful to each other. If people in marriages are faithful to God first, they'll be faithful to each other. If they think about God's way, there will not be abuse in relationships. If everybody loved each other the way that Mary and Joseph loved each other, how they put God at the center of their life. Literally, Jesus Christ was at the center of their relationship. And Mary was so blessed that she had such a great man by her side, St. Joseph, who, although he probably also had a normal life planned, when he heard from the angel that God had another plan for him and his soon-to-be wife, he also accepted immediately. Once he heard from the angel, although it was going to be very tough for him, he immediately did God's will, and he trusted in God. And so that's the other thing that we could learn from Mary and Joseph. To trust God first, and to try to find another person who's going to trust God first, and who's going to put God first in their lives. If both people in the relationship, whether it's a marriage or any type of friendship or any type of family relationship, if both people put God first and they follow the way of God, God will bless them and God will make sure that their relationship will be pure. And that's ultimately what the relationship of Mary and Joseph teaches us. True purity. It mentions that Mary was a virgin and she gave her virginity she gave her life in this aspect, in this natural aspect. She gave it to God, and He made it supernatural for her. He gave her and Joseph supernatural graces so that they could love each other, not only with a natural love, but with a supernatural love. And God wants us to love Him first among all things, and then God will give us His supernatural graces. God will make us and He will make you and your relationships that you have in your life. He will make you grow in love for one another if you put Him first. We live in a world that is very challenging. It's very hard to be pure. We see a lot of people losing their purity, especially when it comes to relationships and, and marital love. We see people doing impure things with each other before marriage out of temptation, out of their desires. But God wants us to order our desires toward Him, to give our desires to Him, and to have Him be the guide of every single aspect of our lives, including our sexual desires. God wants us to give our lives completely to Him. And so that's why, brothers and sisters, if we put God at the center of our lives, and especially of our relationships, He will guide us. And especially during this time of Advent, it's a beautiful time to remember, no matter what we're doing in our lives, no matter what relationships we have, to start to pray more and to develop our relationship with God, who loves us. Prayer is when we speak to God. We should speak to Him more and build that trust and that love with Him. We should listen to His voice more and His words in the Scriptures. And we should have Him be the center of our lives, so that as we are well established with Him as the foundation of our lives, God will prepare us to give of ourselves to another person in our lives with any relationship that he wants us to be a part of as we put him first and as we try to follow the footsteps of Mary and Joseph in their purity, holiness, and love for God and for one another.